Yeah, turn turn your warm ups into Jada, the fourth of war. So we're gonna talk about triangle congruence. Okay, um, so there are several ways to prove that triangles are congruent. In order for a triangle to be congruent to another triangle, all six elements, all six parts of the triangle have to be the same as the other triangle, okay? So what are the six parts of a triangle? Grace? All the sides and all the angles, okay? Now, that's a lot of work to prove that two triangles are congruent. You have to prove that all the sides are congruent and all the uh, angles are congruent. What if you just had all the sides congruent? Have you guys ever done this where you take like three different... I'm going to take a granola bar. No. A granola bar, a pair of scissors, and... This is not a good end of folder here. Okay, um, so if you try to, I can't do this on video, but if you try to make a triangle out of these three different sides or these three sides, you can only make one triangle. No matter how you arrange it, it's only gonna look, the, it's only gonna look one way. It could be, you could, you could even switch the sides of the granola bar and the scissors Right, so there's the, there's the triangle. It looks like an obtuse triangle there. Do you see it? Even if you switch the sides, it's still that same obtuse. I didn't switch it. <laughs> it's still that same obtuse triangle, but it's just flipped over. So you can only make one triangle if you have all the sides the same. So you don't need to prove that all the sides and all the angles are congruent. You could just prove that all the sides are congruent. If you can do that, then you've proved that the two triangles are congruent. Okay, so let's, uh, let's draw a couple triangles. We'll, dr we'll draw the granola bar staple, or not staple, I didn't use my staple. Scissors and folder. Uh, It's kind of the same there, okay. So if this is A, B, C, and this is D, E, F, I'm saying these are right, okay. So those tick marks, you're looking for those tick marks. So the corresponding sides, Remember, what does corresponding mean? What do, what does corresponding mean? Somebody give me a nice definition. The sides that, the sides that have the same tick marks, I guess. Yeah, the same tick marks, or what, do you remember when we talked about corresponding angles, when you have two parallel lines and a transversal and you have corresponding angles, what does that mean? Just like opposite of not opposite of it. In the same, spot. same location. So remember the two parallel lines here and the transversal, like one and four, they're in the same top right location of that little four angle cluster. Okay, corresponding sides would be the same location. So AB and uh, DE, right? No, is that right? Yeah, D, DE. And then uh, what, BC and EF. And then that last one, AC and F, or actually if I go the right way, I'm going DF. Okay. 
and you're cool if you do it in the right order. So going from A to B is the same thing as going from D to E, okay? Sarah, do we need to? I just proved to her that she can't read. Well, that's very sad because it's a German book. <laughs> I know, but never mind. Okay. That's what you can prove to her. That we, we'll just prove to everyone that you can't pay attention. Okay, that's fine. Ooh. Ooh. That's how people already knew about yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right, so what would the corresponding angles be? Can you guys give me the corresponding angles? Um, um, B and E would be uh, 90. So D and, what'd you say? It would be B and E. B and E, yeah, that, that top, that some reason that angle sticks out the most. So angle B and angle E, and you can just use one letter for the angle, right? Because there's only one angle coming out of there. What else? Will? Angle uh, A and F. Okay, so F looks like it's the one of the end of that short side. So A is like the long pointy one. Oh. So which one is that? D. Uh, like the D. Yeah. So it's it's kind of flipped around and and rotated, all right. And then what's the last one? Angle C is corresponds with what? F. F. Okay. So obviously, if you can if you can prove that all six of these corresponding parts are congruent, then you've proved that the two congruent tri the the two congruent triangles, right? So that's the deal, but there are shortcuts because, um, yeah, for example, we talked about that third angle. Um, you don't have to prove that all the angles are congruent, right? Because if you can prove that two of them are congruent, then that third one has to be the same because they have to add up to 180, right? So if two of them are congruent, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, um, but for now, we're going to talk about the SSS congruence postulate. So you can write this down. The SSS congruent postulate, postulate 13. So whenever you include this in a proof, you're just going to say SSS. You don't have to say... You don't have to say postulate 13. You don't have to say SSS congruence postulate. You just say SSS, okay? So basically, SSS says if three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then triangles are congruent. So you can spell it like that. That's a, you don't have to write it out like that. Okay? Now, you don't even have to say corresponding sides, right? Because we, we just, we already demonstrated that it doesn't matter what order you put the scissors, the granola bar, and the folder in, they're still going to be, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the order. So you don't even have to say corresponding sides. You just say sides. Okay. Um, so... You're gonna get homework that's gonna probably offend you because it's so easy. And usually, like if I were to write a congruent statement and saying that these two triangles are congruent, it's not enough to just say, okay, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDF. No, put those in the put the corresponding parts in the right order. So if I say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. That means that A corresponds with D, B corresponds with C and or E and C corresponds with F. Okay? You have when you write the congruent statement, it has to be in OCD order.
okay? And they're gonna try to trick you. This is, I took all the fun out of it because this was just all in alphabetical order, but I could have written it in a way that, you know, you want to do alphabetical order. The, the inner OCD in you wants to say D, E, and F right after A, B, and C, but uh, it just happens to work out that way. Okay, all right, now, this is uh, the next, and we'll, I'll put it up here too. Now, this is something you're gonna use a lot. This is called CPCTC. And you can just write that. So it's three C's with a P and a T in between the first and second C and the second and third C. Okay, now, um, I'm going to tell you what this is, and then I want to see if you can tell me what these letters stand for, okay? It'll be fun. It'll be fun. So if you can prove that two triangles are congruent, that's a powerful thing. You've just loaded your gun with six bullets, okay? Here are the bullets. If you can prove that these two triangles are congruent, like maybe you're given that these two triangles are congruent. Like you're not given that the sides are or whatever. If you're given that these three, tri these two triangles are congruent, it gives you six bullets. What are the six bullets? You can say that EF is congruent to BC. You can say that DF is congruent to AC. You can say that ED is congruent to BA, okay? And you can also say that angle A is congruent to angle D and so on. You have six bullets. Like you may have, like we just used three things to prove that the triangles are congruent. But now we can say, since we know that the triangles are congruent, then all their parts are congruent. Okay? This is CPCTC. What does CPCTC stand for? And there's an of in here. There's an of that goes in here, and we don't usually acronymate the ofs, and there's an R right here. So there's an of and an R in there. Can anyone figure it out? This is great. This is a great little puzzle. What is it? It is congruent. It's the T triangles. Yep. The T is triangles. So triangles are congruent. The, the first one? Yeah. Yep. Corresponding. Corresponding. Points? Not points, because that would just limit it to that, and then you can't say points are congruent, right? Parts. Parts? Yep. Corresponding parts of triangles are congruent triangles. There it is. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles. If their triangles are congruent, all their corresponding parts are congruent. Okay? Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So all the all you have to remember is CPCTC. Okay? This will probably be the first and last time you write this out. Yeah. So let's say there's a test and I prove that these are congruent. Uh huh. I figured it out and I just write CPCTC. Yeah. So let me show you. Let me show you an example of CPCTC. No. no. Okay. So like, would that work? Yeah. Like, let me show you. This is this is a cool example. This is actually an application. Uh, this is making a kite. So let's say that you've got a kite here. All right, so and we're gonna call this A, B, C, D, okay? And so I'm gonna draw a line down the middle. This doesn't look very pretty or awesome. Okay, and let's say that you've got two sticks, you've got two pairs of sticks, and you know that these are congruent and these are congruent. That's all you know. 
I want to make sure that this angle B is the same as angle D. Okay? So first of all, let's use our only theorem that we have so far, my, our only postulate to prove that these two triangles are congruent. That's a C there. The How can I say that these two triangles are congruent? Yeah. Because the three sides of that, of like if you split it in half, it's three tri it's two triangles. Okay. And the three now, sides are all. And you're going to love this. First of all, how do you know that BC is congruent to CD? Well, because, they've got the tick because marks. that's how they came in the package. And that's what those tick marks, that's what's given. So we can say BC is congruent to DC because it's given, but also AB is congruent to AD because it's given. All right, now we're gonna talk about two column proofs here pretty soon. This is a great way to do proofs. It's very organized, okay? That's given, all right? But that's only two sides. What were you saying? I'm saying that if, the tri if, you, are, if you cut it in half kind of at the midpoint where the line that you drew, Okay. Between A and C. How do you know that those two sides would be the same, though? Like the, the two sides of the triangle? Would be yeah. Same? How do you know that this AC because, is because congruent Because the line to... that they're on is the, is, is the and same. And what thing. property is that? How can you say that AC is congruent to AC? Oh. Oh, it's uh, the reflective property. Reflexive property. Reflexive. Is that what you're going to say, Grace? Something but you just couldn't remember yeah, it? Yeah, I just couldn't remember. So that's where we put ref prop. And technically, it's the ref prop of congruence. But anytime you find yourself saying something is congruent or equal to itself, that's the re reflexive property. And it just feels dumb to say it. But now it doesn't feel so dumb because I have to prove that these two triangles are congruent. And the only way I can do that so far is proving that three sides are congruent. Not two sides, but three sides. So I needed that third side. So now I can say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle, let's see, let's do it the right way, ADC, right? Oops. I said ACD, ADC. Why can I say that? Why can I say the triangles are congruent? Yep, yeah, so what's what's the name of that postulate or SSS? SSS. Okay? All right, but that's not what we are trying to prove. We are trying to prove that angle B is congruent to angle D. Why can you say that? Because what well, you raised your hand, Ilya? Well, cuz they they got the same angle C and C and A. So it's gonna be B and D. You're making it one. too complicated. I, I do all the time. But what were you saying, One's Daniel? Can't think properly. They're corresponding. corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Yeah. These are corresponding parts of congruent triangles. We didn't prove that these are congruent yet. We only proved that the, the they had three sides and that proved the triangle. So now we can say C P C T C. Okay? Yep. Well, I mean Technically, you could kind of figure that out if you already know that. Whenever you hear yourself saying that out loud, you can kind of figure it out. Then you probably could, but you can't prove it. And that's the problem. And that's what we're learning. We're learning, yeah, we know that B and D are the same angle, okay? But how do you prove it? Well, we just did. So a lot of your proofs in this class are gonna be first, look for any two triangles that you can prove are congruent because that's gonna give you a six shooter. That's gonna give you a loaded gun with six bullets that you could use. You don't have to use them, but that's a powerful tool. When you can prove that two triangles are congruent, you are giving yourself six possible statements to say. I can say that all their sides are congruent and all their, all their angles are congruent. Whatever I need, you got it, okay? That's what, that's what, this is, it's powerful. You get a, you get a loaded gun. Okay. Um, on your test, you're gonna just, you're gonna be doing stuff like this. So it's gonna give you like two congruent triangles 
they want you to write the congruent statement, and then they want you to write all the corresponding parts. Okay, so all those six bullets. Okay, you guys think you can do that? All right, let's move on to 26. What's next? What's it gonna be? <gasps> Central angles and arc measure. Central angles and arc measure. What's an arc? It's, it's, it's like a half a circle. It's like a half a circle is a, a semicircle is a type of arc. It's a curved line. <laughs> is it a What'd you say? A, it's kind of you. You you don't have to say segment. But technically, you're right. I would say section or, a, yeah, a continuous section of a circle. Okay? So let's, uh, let's get you, um, yeah, so let's just draw it. So here's a circle. This is called a central angle. So let's call this angle C is a central angle. How would you define a central angle? An angle that comes from <laughs> Yeah, basically an angle whose vertex is at the center of a circle. Okay. okay. So vertex at the center. I just almost said a European center. Oh, center. What is the European center? Wait, what? I don't know. Is that a... S-E-N-T-R-E. -E. Is that how Europeans oh, spell that. center? Oh, yeah. Well, Europeans, there's like 50 different languages. European. Well, just language. <laughs> like, what do you just call colors? Okay. C-O-L-U-R. All right, vertex at the center. So basically, this guy right here, this is just an arc. This section right here, that's an arc. An arc is a part of a circle, or a segment, like you said, but segment sounds a little polygonish, so we'll go with part or section of a circle, consisting of two points on the circle, called the endpoints. So it is a lot like a segment. It has two endpoints. So if, if this was A and this was B, the two endpoints would be A and B. And then you have like. Wouldn't it be B in the middle and C be an end point? Though? What's that? Couldn't you could you put these letters into any order you want? You could, but if you're talking about the central angle, you would say angle ACB or BCA, oh. right? Because the C has to be in the. So that's a central angle. Here's another central angle. So angle DCA is also a central. We, we would also say arc AB. Now here's how you denote an arc. You just, just like a line segment. It's, it all is very intuitive. Just like a line segment, it's just, uh, just like this. When you label a line segment, that's how you label an arc. is an adjacent, so you would say arc AB and arc AD are adjacent arcs. So there's a, there's a new word there, adjacent arcs. Okay. Now, we usually just use two letters to identify, just like in a line segment, you use two letters to signify an arc. Now, 
Um, the problem is, in a circle, if I say the section of circle between A and D, this section here, the section of circle between A and D, you can assume that we're talking about this section. But look, here's another section of circle that goes from A to D. Do you see that? If you go the other way, that's another arc. So every arc of a circle has a brother, a big brother, a, a chubby brother, okay? So there's a minor arc and a major arc. For every arc, for every minor arc, there's a major arc. For every major arc, there's a minor arc. Question? Are there infinite arcs in the circle? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not just limited to 360 degrees. You know, you've got, just like in a line segment, there are infinite line segments within that line segment. Um, infinite points, even between the two smallest points, there's infinite points. That just blows my mind. Okay? So even if you live... Right. Yeah, you're right. So, arc AB, let's look at arc AB, shall we? Let's just have a look. Look at arc AB. So, arc AB, we would say, is a minor arc. But, we can't just say AB is... The major arc because how do you know which is which right so we need a third letter to go and just like an angle we're going from here if I were to draw the arc I'm going from A to D and then B or I could say BDA is that major arc so the way we label a minor arc is with two letters the way we have to label a, a major arc is with three letters okay if you just see two letters, you can assume we're talking about the shortest distance between the two endpoints. Okay? The shortest distance on the circle between the two endpoints. Arc AB is the shortest distance from A to B. Right there. You could go the long way if you want, but that is arc A, any point in this section, and then B. All right? So you could have another point here. You could, AEB is the same arc as ADB. You just have to pick one, just like a, you just have to pick one point in between A and B on the long part of the circle. Yes? Um, would AD also be a minor arc? Yep, AD is a minor arc. How would we label the major arc that goes with that, the AD's chubby older brother? ADE? AD is minor. How would I label the major arc that is that completes AD? Do you know, Daniel? A B D. Yeah, A any either B or E. It doesn't matter. A B D is great. All right. So, what's the only kind of arc that has a twin brother, and they're both chubby? Would be an arc that has a right central angle? Uh, no. A half circle. A half circle, a semicircle. Right. Semicircle is just an arc. Um, and we don't really call it a major arc or a minor arc. We just call it a semicircle. Okay? All right. So, uh, a minor arc, it's kind of like complementary angles or like obtuse and acute angles right obtuse and acute angles so minor arcs are under 180 degrees right major arcs are over 180 degrees and under 360 degrees what's that what would you call the, the angles that are like Arcs. Like semicircles. Like you wouldn't call a minor or minor or major. Or minor or major. No. <laughs> no, no four. Not any of those four. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So they're not. It's it's a uh, it's kind of a weird thing. It's kind of like zero. 
Zero is not positive or negative. It's just its own thing. So we just call them arcs. It's semicircles. So they're, they are arcs, but they're just semicircles. Okay? All right. Um, so let's, uh, let's identify a few things here. Well, first of all, let's go, let's go. We, we're kind of skipping ahead. I'm sorry. We talked about, we talked about central angles and we talked about arcs. Um, do you guys have an idea? How many, how many, and arcs are measured with degrees as well. And there's 360 degrees all the way around a circle. Okay. So let's look at this angle. Uh, if you were to guess the degree of this angle, this central angle, ACB, what would you say that is? 21. You have a guess? 21? What's your guess? 45. Yeah. 60. 60? 32. 32. <laughs> okay, so I'm looking at, uh, I'm when I see this, I just see pizza, okay? Because I'm hungry right now. I'm hungry. I'm, I'm hungry a lot. And if it's pizza, if I wasn't hungry, then I'll get hungry in like five seconds because it's pizza there's some things that you you overeat with like there's some foods let me tell you <sighs> tater tot casserole have you guys ever had tater tot casserole i that will kill me one day because i won't realize i'm full and it will i'll choke or something because i will literally not be able to fit more food in my body. Tater tot casserole. It's awesome. So it's kind of like the cool person's shepherd's pie, I guess. I mean, shepherd's pie is cool, but it's kind of like dated, right? Sorry, Mr. Flag, she doesn't know what a tater tot is. What? No, no, what a tater tot is. Go watch Napoleon Dynamite right now. Just leave. Go watch Napoleon Dynamite. Can we watch Napoleon Dynamite? Yeah. Um, if she was in our film class, we would have to stop everything and watch that. But maybe in financial math, we'll, we'll, we'll watch some clips. Okay. I'm sorry. I just no. As bless your heart. You know, you're gonna your life is gonna change tonight because on the way home you're gonna stop at King Supers. You're gonna buy some tater tots. And they actually have the recipe for tater tot casserole on the back of the tater tot bag. So it's like ground beef, cream of mushroom soup, like in vegetables. And I like the vegetables in there. And I'll eat it until, not until I'm sick, because it's one of those foods that you like, you eat so much, you don't feel sick when you eat too much. You just keep eating. And it's, uh, that's why it's going to kill me. <laughs> it's going to kill me someday. But pizza is another thing too. Like oh, I've had four pieces. I think another seven will be fine. You know. Have you ever been to Bojo's? That's that's always where I eat way too much. Yeah. Well, I I do, but then there's that whole competitive thing in me. Uh, that eating contest. Like if you eat a whole thing, I've I've won plenty of eating contests. I don't want to brag, but I've won plenty of eating contests. I know you can't tell by looking at me, but. <laughs> Mr. Flack, why, why you would you laugh? Virtual pizza. What? Have, you're right. This is virtual pizza. Yeah. yeah. Why, don't, why can't we just have like a? But how much pizza? of a pizza? How many pieces do you think yeah, that is? is? Five. What? Well, it pizza? looks like. Well, if if the I did go a little bit past the center there, so oh, the Domino's guy cut it wrong, which I don't always mind because then I will go for the then bigger piece. Then I take the bigger piece. That's how you eat pizza. You don't like. You don't just grab a piece like a moron. First, you assess the eight pieces and you take the biggest one. However, if the biggest one does not have enough toppings, you have to do the math. No, it's it's so you're 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 calculating area and like the the toppings on the pizza a piece of pizza. So, guys, don't eat pizza wrong. Either. Okay? Yeah. Question. Do you do at the New York way? Okay, you can well, do you that. Yeah, that's that, that's that like is that. good. Ask me like a pizza, like a Costco piece. I do, and, and I do like that. I just don't like it as much as a big, thick, 
$10. Like borderline $10. Chicago you know what's disappointing? piece of pizza. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't be talking about this. But you have your own gluten-free pizza. It's great. You can use it like a Frisbee if you want or eat it. It's very effective in both categories. Oh. I haven't, I haven't tried that. So here's my point. This is like one piece of pizza. <laughs> as long as we put tater tots on the pizza. Okay. Tell me that won't be good. Tell me that won't be good. Okay. I did not just hear pineapple. Uh, I. Okay, this looks like one piece. What? How many degrees is one piece of pizza? What? I wish. I wish. Well, this is about if it's if it's eight pieces, three sixty divided by eight is forty five. So if this is forty five degrees. Then it's opening up, right? And opening up. So that's opening up 45 degrees. So this arc measure, the measure of arc AB equals 45 degrees. Okay? The measure of arc AB is 45 degrees. If the central angle is 45 degrees, which makes sense, because it's, it's opening up. 45 degrees out of the 360, so it's only going to take up 45 degrees out of the 360. Okay? So what's the, uh, and this is what we call, and let me, there's an official definition here. This is the, uh, 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 uh. What? This is uh, uh, uh. Are you Yeah. What do you call it? The... Intersecting arc, what is it called? The arc. I think someone forgot an update. Oh, I, yeah. Okay, so finding the arc measure. Okay, so this is the arc. Arc AB is the arc that is intersected by the central angle, so those, me those measures have to be the same. Okay? The measure of an arc formed by two adjacent arcs is the sum of the measures of the two arcs. This is postulate 14. So you can write that down. Ooh, look at, I'm already on, I'm still on CPCTC. Look at all that information that we kind of went over. Okay, postulate 14 says the arc addition postulate, kind of like an angle addition postulate. So if this is 45 degrees, and let's say this is 80 degrees, then arc uh, B, D, B, Measure of that is going to be what? Measure of AB plus measure of DA. So what is that? 125 degrees? Because of the arc addition postulate. It's postulate 14. Arc ad post. The measure of an arc formed by two adjacent arcs is the sum of the measures of the two arcs. Maybe 135, so it's 360. No, it's 80 plus 45. Is 125 plus 125 is, is 
250. Oh, but good, Wait, good, uh, good observation. But DB, remember when I just list the two, it's the shortest distance between D and B. So it's this arc here. Now you're right, DEB, that's a good exercise, measure of DEB. If you know DB, you can figure out DEB. What is it? 360 minus right, so 360 minus that. It's going to be what? 235. What? 235. Okay. Good. All right. Measures of the adjacent parts. All right. Let's do some. Uh, this is actually looks like exactly like one that's going to come on your test. Um, if I go up here. So you're going to identify a couple minor arcs, you're going to identify a couple major arcs, and you're going to identify a semicircle or two, okay? And I think there's going to be one just like this on the test. Two central angles are pictured, uh, A, P, B, it looks like it's 90 degrees, right? That's a big giveaway. If that's 90, that means A, P, C is 90, right? Because B, C is a diameter, it looks like a... Uh, a diameter, so it's a straight line, so those are a uh, linear pair. All right, I guess that's the bell. I think your walk is wrong. Yeah, it's like you didn't I don't think it charged. Okay, that's it. Good job. Black math! Give me some math and I'll give you some flack. Black math!